to the Batmobile. Let's go. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. This is my battery system. Um, I've been running on this uh, three weeks. Um, it's based on the Model 3 battery, which is junk from a, a wrecked car. Um, essentially, the high voltage, 400 volts DC, comes from the battery here, and it goes into this box. This is made by EVTV. Um, and what it does is trick the battery into thinking it's in the car. So it does that by talking via the CAN bus to the battery. The battery is very intelligent and basically this box just makes it appear like a, uh, a normal battery. So you turn it on and you've got 400 volts coming out here and that goes into the high voltage junction box and that in turn goes to charges. Currently I've got three. So these are three 3.3 kilowatt uh, battery charges and these are running on the grid so these are the only thing in my house uh, on the grid with the exception of my PV so I've got uh, four 50 amp uh, sockets installed by the electrician and they charge uh, one two three and I've got space for another one uh, charger to give me 12 point whatever it is uh, kilowatts charging um, the high voltage DC also goes to my 30 kilowatt three phase off grid inverter. It's actually bi directional, but in Australia, we're not allowed more than five kilowatts of inverter connected to the grid or for residential properties. Um, so, this thing is illegal to connect to the grid. So, essentially, what I've done is I run the entire house off grid. So, I've got 30 kilowatts of AC. Uh, coming out here on three phases and that goes in fed into here I could unplug this and plug in a standard three phase generator if I wanted to and that power goes all the way to this interchange box, uh, switch so I can run on battery power through the inverter turn it off and just go back to grid if this system doesn't work and breaks I run out of battery etc and when I'm, regardless of how I'm running, whether on battery or grid, uh, my main um, switchboard is now inside my garage. So this is just standard RCDs that control uh, the various uh, bits around the house, oven, etc., etc. So that keeps you all safe. The only other thing I've got connected to the grid is my uh, inverter. So. Between nine and three, um, the inverter is helping me um, charge the battery here by these chargers, and they're controlled in turn by uh, first the two relays, which are controlled by this box, and that uh, determines when the battery is to charge or when it's full, and I can set the different um, levels if I wanted. These are basic on-off switches. So it just controls whether they're on or off. 
and these are timers. So currently here in WA we have a very very uh, what they call ultra cheap rate between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. so I only charge this battery between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and then every other time these are off so I'm not charging the battery and the good thing of that is on the what they call the shoulder before 9 o'clock and after 3 p.m. my solar is now feeding into the grid when it needs it most and I'm generating more money than I'm paying for electricity so it's a sort of win-win so essentially my house is always off grid and it's always running on this unless of course it fails but I've been running about three weeks now and not one issue um, so that's good then my normal uh, fuse box my old fuse box literally has those four 15 amp circuit breakers here and then um, my main switch for the fire brigade etc and the um, inverter to the solar uh, inverter and then this is just a smart meter so I can see where the power is going in or out um, to the grid etc and from the solar so the rest of the uh, RCDs etc they're all here they're right directly behind this uh, meter box just around here so they've all migrated directly behind and um, that's all fully legal and installed by a professional electrician so that's it um, other things to note the uh, Model 3 battery, that's this big black thing, if it's not clear, the, the whole black thing is what sits underneath the Model 3 car, that's the Model 3 over there, and uh, you've got 12 volts, and it's capable of generating 140 amps, and I feed a, um, a, a buck converter to get 24 volts to run the laptop, and that laptop, I can talk to the inverter to do what I want. Uh, on off what the power is whether I want it to go on grid uh, off grid um, pretty easy I don't need the laptop because this is just on and if it's working I could disconnect turn the laptop off and it just keeps working and then also from the 12 volts I'm making 5 volts with this little power supply converter and that just runs a little Wi-Fi router which gives the display inside the house so I can see how much power is going in and out um, what the state of the battery uh, level is, etc, etc. So this is the EVTV controller and currently it's uh, 2 p.m. so I'm still generating lots of solar and I'm almost uh, up to 90%. I don't want to charge more than 90% um, the battery because it re uh, reduces its longevity. So I'm currently charging at 2. Uh, zero kilowatts um, even though the um, charges are outputting about nine kilowatt uh, that's because I've got my hot water booster on which is somewhere about 2.5 kilowatt and I've got two heated floors um, heating up uh, using it, all this en excess energy um, as a sort of heat bank for the house so why do I need a 30 kilowatt power supply or 30 kilowatts power well this is much bigger than the uh, Tesla Powerwall which can put out 5 kilowatts continuous and 7 kilowatt peak um, which is not enough to even turn my uh, induction stove on so this baby takes 12 kilowatts um, you know this just one element will take five and a half kilowatts and these elements are I think four kilowatts this oven is five kilowatts my water booster heater is another two and a half kilowatts other high loads I've got is my um, bathroom heated floor. So I've got a main giant uh, heated floor. Uh, this whole floor is electrically heated. So that takes about four kilowatts. So here it's currently um, sucking as much uh, cheap electrons as I can do. Because um, that uses as a heat bank during the night of storage um, and heats the house uh, very cheaply. 
Other big loads are of course um, my Tesla charger, so it'll take seven and a half kilowatt. Um, and then I've got a furnace. Here for cooking stuff. I've got an anodizing station, and each one of these uh, tanks has a 1.5 kilowatt uh, heater. I've got welders, a CNC machine. All of these take uh, plenty of grunt uh, and juice. Probably worth mentioning that the round trip efficiency uh, from the grid and or solar through the chargers to the battery, back out through the battery, through the inverter, back to the house is about 90% efficient. Um, I'm currently paying eight cents per unit or per kilowatt hour for electricity here, but on a sunny day, uh, over half of that is supplied by the solar. So in effect, I'm paying four cents per unit on average. Um, so once it goes through the 90% efficient, I'm paying on average between five and nine cents on a cloudy day per unit of electricity. So it's still pretty cheap and I can use that 24 seven, not just uh, limited to between nine and three. Um, I can charge my EV during the day by plugging directly in with my little charger. And that's more than sufficient to cover um, about 120 kilometers of range, just charging in six hours. Um, roughly speaking, for me, um, being able to charge 100% uh, of my car on the cheap rate will save me about $2,000 a year minimum. Um, probably a lot more because I've got solar, um, but uh, at least $2,000 uh, per year. My electricity cost for the house, because I can use this cheap electricity 24-7, um, I figure it's at least um, another 5,500 per year. Uh, it's probably going to be more, but I have to actually measure it, of course. Um, so it's about installing this battery will save me about seven and a half thousand per year. This one cost me about 45,000, uh, as you see it here. But uh, I'll link in the description the way to do it cheaper for about 35,000. Um, so the payback period for a battery like this, if you do it yourself, is in the order of um, uh, between four and a half to six years. So it's getting better economics, but the more and more EVs on the road, these battery packs will become cheaper and cheaper, and it'll become cost effective. The other thing, if you are considering uh, doing this yourself, um, DC is very, high voltage DC is extremely dangerous. Um, this Model 3 battery is capable of 1,000 amps continuous at 400 volts, so that's 400 kilo, kilowatts, and there is absolutely zero safety. So um, not only will it kill yourself instantly, um, but there won't be anything left of you. Um, you'll just be a bunch of carbon. So take care. Going down the hill, Jim. He could have. Use up, chain back up. Here he comes. <laughs> Fred Flintstone. <laughs> you just take a photo of me getting out from under the car. Oh, video. You'll be famous, Rod. <laughs> yeah.